Dr. Georgie Koshi. I'm an infection cardiologist at Universal Hospital. And I'm with my colleague, uh, Dr. Michael Khoury. Michael? Uh, yeah, I'm uh, Michael Khoury. I'm an interventional cardiologist also uh, in Universal Hospital. And uh, we both work uh, very closely in most of the difficult cases, me and my partner here, uh, Dr. Koshi. Uh, let's uh, talk about the balloon mitral valve plastic uh, and how it started and from where it originated and what's the present scenario about it. Uh, well, balloon mitral valve plastic has been used mainly to treat uh, rheumatic mitral valve disease. Um, in the 60s and 70s, most of the people with rheumatic uh, mitral valve disease went for surgery and the surgeon did on them uh, one of two procedures. Either he did the commissurotomy, which is splitting of the uh, tightened valve uh, surgically by opening uh, mm -hmm. the chest, uh, or sometime replacing the whole uh, mitral valve with the uh, artificial one. That's right. uh, now, uh, in the uh, 70s, uh, uh, some centers started doing mitral balloon valvuloplasty uh, by a rough technique which is using a one balloon through a transeptal catheterization. And basically, this is uh, going from the right heart to the left heart by a puncture uh, and then uh, trying to insert either one balloon or sometimes two balloons across the mitral valve to dilate it. Uh, everything got refined in the early 80s uh, when a cardiologist uh, has invented uh, a balloon that it's still used uh, nowadays, is called the Inui balloon. And the Inui procedure became the one which is uh, most uh, done across the world to treat mitral valve disease and spare the patient from going to uh, mitral valve surgery. So the difficulty in the procedure, uh, I think primarily would be to go across from the right side of the heart artificially to the left side of the heart. Now there is no communication in a normal heart between the right and left. So a sharp needle has to be introduced and a passage has to be made from the right to the left. Once a passage is made, then we are able to deploy devices to the left side of the heart to reach the mitral valve and then open it uh, with a balloon. Now there are a lot of technical difficulties in this and a lot of experience is needed in doing such a procedure and there are a lot of complications associated with it if you're not careful. Isn't that so, Dr. I agree with you, uh, Dr. Koshi, uh, in the sense the most uh, comp complex part of the procedure has to do with the puncture of the heart from the right to the left and this is where complications can happen and basically complications can either be fatal on the spot or uh, they would require the patient to undergo surgery immediately in an urgent fashion. Uh, so I agree with you that the transeptal puncture is actually a key uh, complex point in the procedure and once uh, this is done then uh, the rest of the procedure should go easily and smoothly. But there is also a, a, a real need to determine which patient is suitable for a balloon and which patient should go for surgery. So a lot of predetermination towards the case is done in advance. A lot of planning is done in advance by doing echocardiography and sometimes even a transesophageal echocardiogram, which is by putting a tube down the throat and getting a very clear image of the heart and then deciding. So th there is a scoring system which uh, determines uh, which patient will go for surgery, which is better with uh, a balloon mitral valvuloplasty. So we make these decisions in advance That's and uh, then you decide how it goes. That's correct. Um, you see, indeed, uh, uh, the cases uh, they are usually referred for that procedure are cases when there is little bit of cal little bit or no calcification on the mitral valve or the apparatus holding the mitral valve. Uh, and the reason is because uh, one possibility when the valve is too stiff is that once you cracked it open with a balloon, you might run the risk of a complication, which is the mitral valve leaking. So leakage of the mitral valve, which itself becomes a different problem requiring 
most of the time uh, uh, mitral valve repair or even mitral valve replacement. So in these situations where if something goes wrong with the balloon, you can have a sudden leak like the doctor has mentioned, which will need probably emergent or urgent surgery. So it's very important to have your entire heart team on backup. Uh, the operation data also prepped up in the event that it happens, which uh, now at more experienced hands, it's less likely, more rare, but the team is however required to be available as a backup for this procedure. Uh, now, one thing we have to mention, why this procedure, which uh, seemingly appears to be feasible, uh, remains a complicated and a rare one. Um, well, the rarity of this procedure comes from two main points. Uh, one of them uh, uh, is that we do not encounter rheumatic valve disease or rheumatic mitral valve stenosis uh, in the same frequency as we did in the 60s and the That's 70s. Correct. And the reason is because uh, the infection, streptococcal infection, leading to rheumatic fever and rheumatic valve disease has been quite contained in most areas of the world. And basically, in the Western uh, world, uh, this has been taken care of. Therefore, they don't see rheumatic valve disease anymore. Now, it remains that in our area, in certain countries where healthcare uh, is not too great, uh, we still encounter that disease. But overall in the world, the number of patients coming for such a procedure has dwindled down to extremely rare. In the sense that maybe in a country like the UAE, maybe uh, two or three of them might be done in a year time across the country, which is making it a procedure which is not uh, very commonly performed. And that engenders the second problem, when the disease is rare by itself, uh, the physicians or the professionals who perform the procedure will not be capable of maintaining good skills over the years. So if you're doing very rarely the procedure, you're not capable of keeping your uh, technical skills up to a level that will allow you to do it comfortably. So these are the two main problems. The, uh, the dwindling down of the number of the mitral valve stenosis of rheumatic origin that we are seeing across the world, and second, the rarity of that procedure, which is making the procedure by itself uh, rare and not being done commonly. So the thing is, uh, luckily from uh, for our side, uh, we have had uh, the opportunity to do a lot of these cases uh, earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, yourself so much earlier in your career, you've done a lot of them, which makes it uh, okay for you to attempt these procedures. Now, uh, a newer intervention cardiologist would hardly have any exposure to That's this. Correct. So they would have to be more careful and much more planned in attempting uh, such a procedure. Uh, also, like I mentioned earlier, it's important to have the entire team uh, ready for a backup for any unplanned the complications, which I think at our hospital, That's uh, correct. it's being uh, planned and uh, programmed quite well. That's correct. I, I agree in, in the sense that uh, all uh, valvuloplasties, where we go by a balloon to open a valve, it's, it's not a one-person work, it's a, it's a teamwork. Uh, basically, in our particular case, um, the surgeon has been informed and was on standby, uh, anesthesia has been uh, informed and they were actually present in the cat lab uh, and uh, the whole team of cardiology was cooperating on uh, going through the stages of the procedure and uh, doing it step by step so it is a teamwork it's not a one-man show uh, because of the uh, rarity of the procedure and the complexity and complications possibly of the procedure. Uh, so it is not a one-man show, it's a teamwork. And fortunately for us at Universal Hospital, we have the appropriate team to conduct such a procedure.